Welcome back to today. Now, cover up or cop it is the new world Sydney siders are waking up to. From today, those indoors and on public transport not wearing masks will be fined $200. For more, we're joined by independent MP Zali Stegall and media commentator Rob McKnight. Zali, I'll go to you first, though. The New South Wales Premier was under enormous pressure to make masks mandatory. Is this going to help? And did she hold out too long? Uh, look, I, I don't want to talk about the what could have been, but um, uh, look, I think it is good that they are now mandatory for indoor venues, shopping, public transport. Uh, I'm a little bit ambivalent about the 200 on the spot fine because I think that doesn't solve the problem. People just need to either hand them out at venues if people don't have them. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit worried, you know, I think teenagers will get caught out without masks, but um, I think it is great that they're now mandatory. I think everyone just needs to really do their bit because businesses need to be open and we need masks for that to happen. Well, you say they're handing them out, though, but, I mean, maybe that needs to be stricter because thousands were packed Rudy Hill RSL for a Human Nature concert. The venue there <laughs> said that they did hand out masks, but it looked like no-one was wearing them. Yeah, look, that's really disappointing seeing those images. And, I, look, I have great concerns about the cricket. I have concerns about large venues like that because small businesses are doing it really tough and they're having to massively restrict their capacities. Um, and it's all because of outbreaks. So, I mean, people, come on, just wear a mask. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's what you can do to keep yourself safe and other people safe. I find it extraordinary that so many people um, are just uh, oblivious to what you just need to do. Rob, I mean, you can still enjoy human nature and not get fined $200 and have a good sing-along. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that $200 is enough of a fine or should it be more? It should absolutely be more. Uh, I'm sorry, Zali, but mandatory masks need to be fine. People don't do the right thing. We've seen this time and time again with all the Karens in the world. And so we need to actually make sure that we force people to do the right thing. We saw that in Victoria when they were forced to do the right thing and they got those cases down. New South Wales needs to follow that. But what I would say, David, is we need to stop this rivalry. You would have seen on Twitter every state having a go at each other about their yes. policies. I think every leader has actually done the right thing. They've done the best that they can. But as a Queenslander now, I've moved up here. I've been here two years, so I'll never be a Queenslander. But what I would say is stop telling us what to do. Our borders have been closed. We live a pretty normal life up here. So I just don't want to hear leaders and people down in Sydney constantly telling Queensland, open the borders open the borders. No, thanks. We're all right. We'll, we'll be OK. So us versus them is OK if it's New South Wales and Victoria, yeah. but then Queensland no. <laughs> just keep <laughs> us out of it. Uh, so, no, Rob, let I'm me... just saying don't tell other states what to do. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Well, Rob, let's talk about Victoria then because they're setting this bold goal of zero cases by the weekend after just three were announced yesterday. What do you reckon? Can they do it? Yeah, look, I do think they can. Yes, we've had the hotel quarantine scandal, but once you get past that, you've actually got to say that they worked hard to get um, COVID cases under control. I actually do believe Victoria can do it once they set their mind to something. They've shown that they know how to do it. I have a lot of faith that the government will do this and get it right. All right, let's move on to this new ad from BCF. It's stirring up a bit of controversy this morning. The commercial features scenes from an Aussie summer amid the pandemic. But it's this bit here with a bloke eating a bat that sparked formal complaints. Jazz is a bit upset that somebody ate a bat Cos now she's at this jetty and not her uncle's lovely flat <laughs> Zali, I can hear Rob laughing in the background. Have people lost their sense of humour or is this actually offensive? Well, I look, I guess you, you've... Uh, it's strange, maybe, is the best way to put it. Um, uh, look... I can see animal animal cons conservation will be in up in arms. There's no doubt about it. It, it's, it is kind of an unusual choice. Um, but uh, look, I think I think let's keep a bit of a sense of humour as well. We, we do need to uh, try and get tourism going and get get things happening. And uh, it's been a serious year, 2020. Maybe some lightheartedness. But look, I do take the point from an animal conservation point of view. Yeah, uh, look, Rob, I think that that's been sort of disproven now, the whole bat-eating myth. But, you know, you've got to admit, this is, I guess, good marketing by the company because we're all talking about it now. 
Absolutely. It's great marketing. This is what every advertiser tries to do, tries to get it on segments like this where we're talking about it. Um, I found this fun. Oh, I laughed. I found it funny. Um, the fact is we still, a lot of people still think uh, the virus came from a bat. It's playing on that. It was censored for television, which I think is a real shame because this is the standout moment of the ad. It's a great message. Let's stay at home for, uh, we're staying at home in Australia. Let's see all the great things. And I've got to ask, David, has anyone that's complained about this ad likely to be a consumer of BCF? You know, like, who are we talking to here? The people complaining about this ad, I don't think they're camping. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> or eating bats, hopefully. Look, finally, Greece <laughs> is no longer the word. It's got groove, obviously. It's got feeling. But is it also sexist, racist, and homophobic. This is according to critics who never want it to be shown again. So, so this happened on the weekend in England. Uh, and, and this is what... I think a lot of what happened was a lot of, like, young kids, kids who were in high school, came out and watched this movie probably for the first time and went, what is going on with the morals in this movie? Is it... Uh, has it skipped that generation completely or should it be banned? Oh, look, there are so many other bigger things to worry about. But for me, look, it's entertaining. Yes, it's got some messages that are probably not entirely up to date anymore. But I think our youth are pretty discerning and they can pick that. They probably make fun of a movie like this. Um, and I think if you only have to watch a few of the music videos going around, <laughs> there's a lot worse out there. Rob, uh, the ending is not a great message for girls, though, because if you want to get a guy, take up smoking... Slap on a cat suit and he's all yours. I mean, he's the one that you want. Change everything about you to get the man See, uh, to like terrible you. Terrible message for young ladies all. out there. <laughs> it has been, but, you know, it, it is what it is. This has never been a great message for kids, but it is such a loved movie. And you know what? You've just got to give me a break with all this cancel culture. You know, like... It is what it is. If you don't like Greece, don't watch it. This is the thing. We've got so much choice in our lives now. There are multiple streaming services. You've got multiple television stations. If you don't like Greece, don't watch it. Everyone knows what Greece is. It's like saying you don't know that Darth Vader is Luke's dad in Star wait, Wars. Wait, it's wait, one of wait, those things. What? Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry. I was going to watch it this weekend, <laughs> Rob. That's. I can't believe you've done Sorry, that David. To me. Don't tell me you don't know that anyway. <laughs> no, you got me there. Zali, I mean, I, did you think, you know, I, I don't know about showing my daughter Greece anymore. I, I look at it as an adult and I loved, like, was obsessed with Greece, but I go, yeah, I'm not sure about some of the things in this and I don't know if I want my daughter to change for a man. Yeah, well, look, I think most of the most young girls these days wouldn't buy the message that's being sold in Greece. So um, I think, you know, the question is, would she want to watch it? Uh, I probably not. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of other choices. I think they're more discerning. And I, it's not about cancelling the past, but it's learning from it and learning from those messages and making the great movies now that have the message, you know, watching Ride Like a Girl last year, you know. Um, there are so many other stories out there that you can tell that are positive, that are the right message, that encourage and motivate young girls and young men to yeah. be more than just a smoking, leather, wear leather jacket wearing. <laughs> it's pretty iconic, though. And also, it gave us no. Grease too, which is a joy. Uh, Zali and Rob, thank is you both so much this morning. <laughs> Great to have you both on the show. Stay, take care and mask up out there, Zali.